My name is William Charles Demen. I am based at Stanford University in California. I'm in the Department of Psychiatry, but there is a division of sleep medicine, which uh, I started is now headed by a colleague, a younger colleague. Okay, uh, my name is Dr. Mayor Krieger, and uh, I'm a clinical professor of medicine at the University of Connecticut, and I'm from, uh, uh, I'm currently in, in Hamden, Connecticut, USA, and I spent uh, 29 years running a sleep laboratory in, 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 in Canada. In fact, it was the first uh, clinical sleep lab in Canada. It opened up in 1970, I'm going to say 1977. And so uh, I've been involved in sleep for a very long time. Not as long as my good friend here, but uh, but pretty close. I mean, I'm probably the longest now of anybody living. No, Bernie Webb is still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, your your center opened up what in '73 or something? Seven. Seventy. So it's the old. It's probably the oldest. No, it's the oldest sleep disorder center in in the world. Yeah. Well, the, 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 this edition has a lot of very neat things in it that really were not in the previous edition. There have been a lot of changes in sleep medicine in the last three to four years. Um, and and the, uh, for example, there's now home sleep testing, which has become very, very big. There are new rules for um, sleep staging that have just been published. Um, and, and the field has really changed dramatically and there are many people in other fields that are getting interested in sleep. For example, cardiologists and people with metabolic disorders, respiratory disease and so forth. Um, we have brand new sections. We have a section of sleep in, in, in older people which d uh, didn't exist in the previous um, uh, editions. We have a, a section on sleep and cardiovascular disease which didn't exist. We have one on sleep and occupational medicine uh, every, everybody now realizes that having a sleepy pilot or having a sleepy truck driver is dangerous both for the patient and for the people around them. And so there's a section uh, of many chapters dealing with those very, very new topics. We have, we have a section on genetics, uh, which, which is brand new as well, because that's really where all of medicine is going, is trying to understand the genetics of, 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 uh, and the, the blueprints within us that make us sick and, and so there's a tremendous amount of very exciting stuff that, that's new and, and exciting um, and we have a lot of information that's on the web because you can't put everything into a book anymore. Uh, <laughs> you, you can't put movies into a book, you can't put images uh, properly into a book so there's a ton of stuff that's on the web and, and in the future we hope to have everything on your little tablet. And, and, and that's something, that's my next goal, is, is to get the thing so uh, we don't have to do a lot of exercise to lug around the knowledge that we all seek. The Atlas, over the years, um, I've always carried a camera with me whenever I examine my patients. And if I find something interesting, I photograph the patient, I get their permission to use their, their photographs. I have interviews uh, of patients as well. And, and the only way to learn about being a doctor is to, is, is, to, is to learn from your patients. So I have photographs, I have interviews, and I have actual records of patient studies that people can use um, to learn about their patients and how to treat them better. And that's something um, that I think people will, will appreciate. And again, that type of content can't be just in a book, and a lot of that content is actually uh, on the web, and people can look at classic interviews of patients with narcolepsy, sleep apnea, uh, uh, all sorts of neurological conditions, heart disease. So um, there's a lot out there that people can actually learn about. In, in the, historically, just recently, the, uh, there was a, a new sleep board exam was created by the American Board of Internal Medicine. And all of a sudden, many people who didn't think they would ever have to take another exam in their life uh, were confronted with the possibility 
of having to take another exam, and I didn't actually need to take it, but I decided to take it just for fun. Um, I'll, 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 <laughs> although taking an exam is never actually fun because it was nine hours long, a nine hour long exam. Um, but one of the things I learned as I was sort of preparing for this and after I did the exam is that there aren't, there really aren't really very many um, resources out there that are current that sort of emulate what is going to be on the exam itself. I've had a great experience with, with Elsevier because my history with Elsevier goes back um, probably to the middle, 80, uh, middle early 80s. And at that time, um, sleep was really very, very new. And somebody um, at Elsevier uh, contacted me to do a, a clinics in chest medicine on sleep disorders. And, and, um, and anyway, so I, I, I organized that and it went very, very well. And, I, and about a year or two later, someone from, from Elsevier, then it was called Saunders, um, said, you know, this was a pretty popular issue. What about thinking about getting a book organized, which led me to contact Bill and, and Tom Roth, and, and the book was sort of born. And, um, and in, in some ways, the, the evolution of the book sort of mirrored the, the, the change in the publishing industry in the last quarter century. The, the, the first and the second edition were all typed, typed manuscripts. In the first one, no, hardly, there was only one author that, that used the word processor. Everybody else had their manuscript typed. They sent it to me and to Bill and, 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 and so we had these manuscripts traveling like crazy back and forth. By the third edition, most people were, were using word processors and they were shipping the, their content on floppy disks. And, you know, some, there are people out there who've never seen a floppy disk. And, and, and uh, so the whole process changed dramatically. Um, uh, with the fourth edition, everything became electronic. Um, the website was developed for the fourth edition because we realized that, gee, there's all this other content that, that needs to be presented to people. And, and the fifth edition is a, a continuation of that process, and, and I'm sure that by the time uh, uh, you know the next edition comes out, God knows when that would be, um, it'll probably be on a tablet. And 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 again, I'm looking forward to the time when when the next sort of phase starts, and who knows what's going to come after. I mean, you've seen these things change like mad. Yeah. Well, I haven't had nearly as much experience as he had, but it's, it's all been good.